Sasa katika hiyo harakati mimi narudisha. She came behind akanipiga. The next thing I knew I'm inside the freezer. Wewe well, ukiwa mzima? Yes. Akafunga freezer na kaasha. So kwasha I was just there. I'm shivering. There's no help. I have no one. Wewe well, ulika kwa unakaa kwa freezer 2 days. Yes. Two whole days, no food, no water. Hi Tuko family. My name is Kingori Wangeshi and this is another episode of my story. In this episode, we are just about to find out what happens when your family chooses a partner for you, a 70 year old, and yet you are in your mid 20s. Do you take them? Do you reject them? Let's find out from today's guest, Susan Joki, from here in Kiambu. My name is Susan Jokingonyo, mm -hmm. born and raised in Mombasa. Uh, currently, I'm in Kiambu County, mm -hmm. and uh, I would like to share my story. Thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to come and hear your story, even as you shared your story uh, to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you have taken courage to share it. I had some some bit of it, and uh, it is. It has highs and lows. Yes. So we are here to hear that one. Uh, where do we start? Okay. Uh, back in Mombasa, I went to school from nursery to eight. From there to high school. From there, uh, I studied to play people, but unfortunately, I was not able to finish the college because of lack of fees. So things went hard uh -huh. for me. Uh -huh. I was raised with a single mother, no father. So I could not experience fatherly love for me. It was hard for me. At what point did you get your first child? I think 13, 14 years there. What happened? What happened is there was a time I went back home because of lack of school fees. So I was in thirst of studying. Mm -hmm. I told my mom, I would like to go back to a boarding school. I study, mm -hmm. finish, because I would like to have my own salon and in the near future, have my acting industry to help people who have the passion of acting and doing all those stuff. So my mom just told me, for now, you cannot go back. I don't have money. You, you need to stay home and do something, get useful. Me, I went out. I had bad friends. I started clubbing, from clubbing. As I said, that's where I, I found out any, you can have different men. At that time, I was very innocent, but there's one friend of, friend of mine who introduced me to that kind of life. So I started having different men. It reached a point of where I found one. I was open to him. He told me in return of him helping me, I should accept him being my guy. So I told him, okay, just give me a week. I'll get back to you. He gave me a week. I went home. I talked to my sister. My sister told me, hey, umepata mwanamume? Mwanamume amekwambia ukae ungoe u umkubali. Kisha atakulipia shule, ufanye nini? Uendele. So for me it was hard to make that decision. But the persistent of my sister akanyambia, "Wewe kubali, wewe fanya, unaona? Usikae nyumba, wewe endelea na shule." Because I was, nilikuwa niko karibu kukalia mti ya niyangu ya eight. So, nikamwambia, it's fine. I went, I called that guy. Calling him, he told me, it's fine. You have accepted. Yes, okay. Uh, let's meet Mombasa, Bella Vista. And as the story goes, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. You see, so from there, he paid my school fees. It was on and off until... I found out I was pregnant. So I looked for him, talked to him. All he said is, Oyo mtoto si wangu. That's what he said. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
he told me huyo mtoto si wangu so i told him how can you deny your kid and you took advantage of me because i was in a desperate situation i came to you while i was open and you took advantage of it no no reaching home that day I was totally drunk I, my sister opened the door for me she asked me suzi ni nini mbaya i told her all things have gone worse right now i'm pregnant i'll have to leave school and i don't know where to go cuz mama kijua it will be a problem so she was the one who went and talked to my mom so me i went to my mom i told her mom i'm sorry but i was afraid of me approaching you and telling you you'll be disappointed no na so my mom told me ah it's fine we'll take care of the kid usito usito so i had to leave school for some time nika lea mtoto nika lea mimba nika za kuza nika ka one year out of school mm-hmm. taking care of my son so at that point kuka home taking care of my son i developed that motherly son love so after that one year my mom told me she has got money i should resume school so going back to my former school explaining the situation they refused taking me back so i had to start afresh to another school went for an interview i had to repeat class 7 again so i i went to another school did the interview passed started from class 7 to 8 finished then took some time while i was out of school after i was done with my class 8 exam i stayed like 2 3 2 3 months then got my results after getting my results i was called to alliance of which i did not go because me okay for me that was not my passion i wanted to go to st elizabeth st elizabeth girls school so i went to st elizabeth it was only girls kind of from 1 from 1 to from 4 i finished where, where is st elizabeth okay at that time it was in nairobi mm-hmm. i don't remember exactly where so it was in nairobi i was studying in nairobi which is a boarding school so i studied so you would travel from mombasa to nairobi yes and from nairobi to mombasa yes shule zikifungwa mm-hmm. so and you finished high school i finished high school did you do any other course okay finishing high school i got the chance of at that school i like making friends so i made friends with a certain girl she's called melina mm. so me I was just open to her i told her hey melina mimi nikimaliza shule ningependa ku kufungwa acting school yangu unaona salon ivo so at that time she told me ah suze i can connect you i was like ah uh-uh. the first incident what happened to me was me being connected with a friend i ended up pregnant so alvo she when she told me she wants to connect me my told her no the first meeting with her her dad was there so she told her dad dad wendo so na ako na passion ya ku act i went for audition mm-hmm. going for audition i passed mm-hmm. but unfortunately it was far from where my mom used to stay mm-hmm. so it was too from i used to use transport mm-hmm. so mamango akakuwa against it she was against it from the first time mpaka the last time so me asking her for transport she refused she had the money i left home no telling my sister no telling my mom i went to my friend's place melina i stayed there so me staying there uh, melina the mother of melina called my mom akamwambia i so ako kwangu na angependa ku perfect talent yake ya acting mamangu akaanza kumwambia mfukuze mwambie rudi nyumbani mimi staki 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 anzi tena kwa mbona lale na wanaume staki 
So you see that mentality of my mom, she has that fear and the mentality of men will use me. So the mother of Melina drove me home. I went back home. My mom sat me down and told me, it's better you try another cause. Like in easy acting. So that's where my heart broke into two. Me going back to hustle, I had to do what I did the first time. Looking for the same friend Monyalin introduced kwa baby daddy wa kwanza nona so me going back nikapata mwingine nikamwambia mimi natafuta kazi kumwambia natafuta kazi akan connect ya ku kuuza simu nana you are paid with commission commission <laughs> so akanipatia simu nikaanza ku hawk selling to people convincing people and know how good they are so at first it was good for me i got my first payment nikatuma home my mom took care of my son so things were good for me ikafika from mombasa we came to nairobi from nairobi we wanted to go sasa to nakuru to sell phones so reaching to Nairobi apo any i started having misunderstandings with the person who employed me cuz you are selling phone you are paid with commission you sell four phones he pays me 2000 of which you sell a phone he tells you you are co- any he wants a commission of 4000 the rest is yours so you fa- you sell that phone maybe like 8000 So for it is for its mine. Mm-hmm. He will give me 2000. So while me asking for the other 2000, he will tell me ah ndakupatia baadaye. So you see it went on I was patient because I had a son. I just told myself I want to be patient because my son is depending on me and my mom. So me I was patient enough but my patient ran out. Well, it turned out I just confronted him and I told him me I want all my payment. He threw me out. It was in the middle of the night. He had rented for us we were two girls and four boys. So that's when I just went home. I told my mom if the other means of me taking care of my kids. So my mom told me she doesn't know. But my sister goes yani she's someone who knows different people she told me so i can connect you utaenda saudi so at that time we used to watch news ladies being thrown off the balcony mm-hmm. that was back in 2017 2018 2019 2019 so at that time i was afraid uh before corona i went 2020 February on 20th. Mm-hmm. So me went to Jeddah with mm-hmm. five of my friends. Yes. Mm-hmm. My employer came the third day. When he came the third day, he took me to his house. Reaching to his house, the wife was there with three kids. She had three daughters. So she has three kids. They welcomed me nicely. They served me food. The first time Arabs are nice to you cuz they any they want to try you in everything so they gave me a full portion of food which you are served with a big plate they are giving you welcome so they gave me i didn't finish it i returned it to the kitchen they they started placing gold in the kitchen in the dining sitting room they're just trying you money they throw it you. yes they are throwing it everywhere so each time i find their gold i return it to them each time i find their money i return it to them each time they fa- they serve me yani yeah, yeah, they give me a lot of food i return it back to the kitchen so that woman sat me down and told me hey susan you are very different i asked her why she told me Uh, we have tried with our goals you've returned money you've returned food you've returned what do you want i told her i'm here to work she told me are you facing any challenges back at home i told her no 
because my agent told me you should not be open to your employer. Uh -huh. They might take advantage of you. So she started telling me, uh, are you interested in, in learning Arabic? I told her, yes. You need to change from being Christian to being a Muslim. I told her I cannot. She asked me, why? If you change, I'll give you everything. I'll give you all the goals. I'll give you money. I'll treat you well. I told her, no, thank you. I'm okay with me being a Christian. And if you have a problem with it, please return me back to my office. What What were you doing in that house? You were going to Okay, for me, I was cleaning. Kila msichana kianda Saudi, it depends. Ju wengine wanaenda Saudi, wanambiwa, unaenda kusafisha nyumba, uh -huh. na ukifika kule, unapata mfilipino wa Bangladesh. Ovish, ukipata mwanzako, unambiwa wewe section yako ni watu? watoto ama unaweza fika kule ukaambia wewe section yako ni ya kusafisha maiti hmm? yes the arabs when wanaeka maiti kwa nyumba hmm. so your section is for you to go clean kama ni mtoto amekufa amemweka kwa room so your section is to clean you will be cleaning that body for the next two years mbona wanaweka kwa nyumba hawataki kuzika kwa nini See, they have that nita nini hiyo ushirikina so from e apo mimi sasa section yangu to me it was kusafisha nyumba mm -hmm. from up floor nyumba ilikuwa gorofa nne mm -hmm. so nyumba moja yes ya familia moja yes mm -hmm. ni mama mm -hmm. na watoto wake watatu na bwana bwana ni journalist so yeye bwana hakuangi kwa nyumba mostly ni mimi na mama na watoto na watoto sasa mimi nilikuwa nasafisha kila siku unalala one hour unaamka ukilala ta hiyo one hour it's like siku ya ramadhan ndo unalala one hour but hizi siku zingine unalala 20 minutes unakuja unaamshwa sometimes anakuja na niamshe na polite way sometimes anakuja nani mwagili ya maji allah ndo kukuamsha ile mpaka uamke mentally, physically mm. na emotionally. Mm -hmm. Unaona? Sasa venye mateso ilianza nikaanza kuambia mamangu. So at that time sikuwa na namba ya sister yangu. Nikamtisha mamangu nilikuwa na insist. Nipatie namba ya sister yangu. Nipatie namba ya sister yangu. Anaambia, "Ah, nitakupatia kesho." You see excuses. Anatafuta excuses ovicha ni kafika tu mahali nikamwambia mam usiponipatia namba ya sister yangu mimi sitakutumia pesa naona hata mm. kama uko na watoto wangu mimi nataka namba ya sister namba ya sister yangu ulikuwa unamtumia pesa kiasi gani okay nikilipwa salary yangu yote inaenda kwake mhm mm cuz tuliambiwa it's a chance of 50 50 you might return alive ama unaweza kosa kurudi kabisa nani aliwaambia the same agent mhm mm naona sasa mimi kwa bwa hiyo nikaingelea uoga ya mimi naweza rudi mimi naweza kwa saa kurudi naona sasa niliandikisha mamangu next of kin of anything that happens she's in charge of everything of mine mpaka watoto kurudisha mwili yangu kuzikwa hivyo naona sasa the next day hako niambia if her sisters are coming she didn't tell me anything me woke up early made my i finished my cleaning i went there is a section of where it's a dining table but that's where they told me i can iron clothes so i went to that section i sat down on a chair and i started ironing clothes you iron clothes everything inner wears bra suits socks bed sheets everything Each time I iron them, mwanamke anakuja na anazitoa. Kama nimepiga pasi shati za bwana long sleeves nimezikunja vizuri, anakuja na toa anaambia, "Mafi coys." Anaambia that's not good. "Mafi coys." Nirudie. I repeat, yani that was the work. It reached uh, saa 8:00 ya huko. Saa 8:00 saa huko it's like tumeachana na 2 3 hours Kenya. Naona. Sasa ikafika saa nane huko, nikaambiwa niache kupiga pasi. Niende jikoni, nianze kukata kata kitunguu, tomato hivyo. Na wageni wakikuja, 
your employer anafaa kuambie in advance ndio kama uko na nguo uschedule ya baadaye cuz uwezi sema kesho you are not in your house so you have to uh, you have to follow the rules of that house Sasa for me mimi nika mimi sikuambiwa nikatoka nikaenda nikaosha mikono nikaingia jikoni nikakatakata vitunguu vitunguu umekewa hapo imejaa basket unaambiwa vitunguu zote ukate within 5 minutes umalize sasa unamuliza aje unamalizaje vitunguu vitunguu hizi zote with 5 minutes so ukikatakata pole pole anakuja anakuchapa she hits you wow did she hit you yes uh-huh. anakuchapa so akikuchapa ile ukitan ukijaribu kumuliza anakuchapa tena so me i used to endure that pain nikifikiria watoto wa watoto wangu sasa ikafika point ya akachukua pasi i have some bruises huko ya kuchomwa ikafika point ya akachukua pasi akaenda akaiwasha ikakuwa moto akakuja ka akaekelea so kwa ekelea mimi nika drop ile kisu me while dropping the knife i just went ouch nika inhale the pain inhaling the pain i ran to my room nikafunga mlango i took my phone nikapigia mamangu nikamwambia mom i am tired nimechoka mamangu akaniambia sasa unachoka baki ya miezi zingine za kuhesabu nikamwambia mom nikufia saudi kwa sababu ya pesa let me just come back home mamangu akaniambia hapana wewe vumilia nikamwambia hapana mimi nimechoka kama nikutafutia watoto wangu let me come back home i look for another means of taking care of my kids sasa ndio wapi ilifikia mpaka anakuweka kwa freezer mimi kwa 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 freezer ni kuuliza mshahara yangu uh-huh. cuz hizo miezi zote mpaka i was almost finishing my contract nilikuwa sijalipwa niko na pressure nyumbani ya my mom ananiambia pesa 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 nimekuwa open na yeye she doesn't trust me she doesn't believe me naona so mimi each time nikimwambia my employers wanipatie pesa i pay for my kids school fees nitume home wa kule wananipatia excuses so that's why nikaamua ni ni niache kazi before niache kazi nilikuwa nishambia agent wangu anti mami nikamwambia mimi nataka kuacha ka kwa sababu mimi sijalipwa na watoto wangu wamefukuzwa shule nimejaribu kuambia hawa employers wangu in a good way wanipatie pesa yangu lakini wananitafutia saba, sababu akaniambia ah wewe umelia watakulipa nikamwambia sasa watanilipa na mimi na nikaribia kumaliza contract nitarudi kwetu bila anything akaniambia sawa cha niongee na wao I waited. Nikangoja. It became a month. It became two months. Nikaona sina hope na agent. Nika sasa nika nikakuja sasa client nikaambia I'm not doing anything. It's either you pay me or you take me back to the office. Mwanamke akani akakasirika akanipiga 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 akanipiga. Hiyo usiku sasa nika akanyambia niende nichukue takataka. Kujaribu kuchukua takataka, I had planned to run away. Sasa saa hiyo anachukua takataka, akajua ya kwamba nimevaa nguo zingine ndani. Nikitoka nje gate ni kutoa hiyo na ni hizo nguo zao nyeusi na the uniform nitoroke. Shiniu, cause walikuwa wamekambaka hidden camera to my room. Sasa ni mwanamke tu anaona everything I do in my room. Naona that's monitoring. If that's what I went through. Uh-huh. Naona. Uh-huh. Sasa mimi kutoka na ile mfuko ya uchafu akayambea rudisha. Naona. Kurudisha I took it back nikamuliza why? Akanyambea no, not today. Sasa katika hiyo harakati mimi narudisha she came behind akanipiga The next thing I knew I'm inside the freezer. Well, okay, Yes. 
wanakweka freezer yao ni kubwa it's very big wanaezeka nyama kuku anything beef ndani na ukatoshea so wakanika hapo akanifunika uh. akafunga freezer na kaasha so kwasha was just there i'm shivering there's no help i have no one akanifunika after two days anakuja na nitoa wewe ulika kwa unaka kwa freezer two days yes two whole days no food no water no food no water na uogi you are put in the freezer like on in a freeze yes on a freeze hivi after two days ndo nakuja unatolewa unapewa kitu cha kujifunika na mtoto wake wa kwanza first born anaitwa Gena anakuja ananipatia kabla ngeti i cover myself kujifunika na kaa ananiletea chai na kunywa sasa hiyo i'm shivering i'm trying to tell her please tell your mom to let me go please i'm ready to work i don't need i don't need money just let tell her to let me go mtoto anaenda analia yeye the first born na mtoto wake wa mwisho walikuwa wanaenda wanalia kwa mama yao mama anikubali siku mbili zikiisha anarudisha tena it went for two weeks sasa so the last time nilitolewa kwa freezer that's where nikaka nikafikiria nikirudishwa tena kwa freezer will, will i be alive How long will I hold my breath? How long will I survive with no food, no water? Ma skungapi. So that's why I came up with the plan of me acting to be crazy. I started throwing things. Nikajifanya mimi mwenda zimu. Nikaanza kupiganisha vitu na jipiga na jiumiza evil just harming myself. Ndo I believe ya kwamba I'm mentally. So kwa na hivyo akanichukua akapigia bwanake hiyo siku bwanake alikuwa kazi akapigia bwanake akamwambia arudi kwa nyumba suzi is mad is mad bwana akakuja akijaribu kuniongelesha najifanya hata siski wakanichukua wakanipeleka police station kupelekwa police station kufika i came back to myself kufika pale polisi ananiambia eti you are mad naambia i'm not mad me i don't want to work eh mwanamke akaona eh kumbe wewe si mwandazimu haya kujaribu kun convince ni rudi mimi nikamwambia mimi si rudi mpaka nikamwambia if you force me i'll remove my clothes and return mad <laughs> wakasikia waka nitatoa nguo ni rudi mwandazimu mm-hmm. mwanamke akasema la ana mabga kasema hawanitaki. Mm-hmm. So from there nikakaa police station two days. Polisi wakaniletea chakula, nikaenda kuangaliwa but ilikuwa imeni affect my mental health. Mm-hmm. Naona. Sasa from there nikapelekwa deportation center. Mhm. Nilikaa huko for how long? Okay. Hapo tulika two year two months. Mhm. Cause ya uh, hiyo negotiation Kenya and Saudi and you came back to Kenya you were deported yes mm-hmm. so me being deported kufika tu hivi nikapitafuta simu cuz i had no phone i had nothing on me you were not paid no mm-hmm. so mimi ku rudishwa kufika tu JKA the first thing which was running through my mind was nataka kuongea na sister yangu i looked for a phone i called her nikamwambia mimi nimefi she was shocked akaniambia uongo nikamwambia nimefika yeah. i had a friend mwenye nilimomba simu akaangamwambia aka, ongea na yeye akaongea naye akamwambia sister yako amefika tuko naye hapa juu yake yeye na ni kama yani akili iko haiko my sister came it took time for her from banana to jeke yeye it took time for her but alifika kufika kunione hivi alilia kwa vile ulikuwa unakaa yes mm-hmm nilikuwa nimekonda niko na maalama so at that time sister yangu aliniona she broke down any alini hug lakini akaenda on her knees akanyambia akisu 
hii yote umepitia nikamwambia yes hauna hata anything nikamwambia sina chochote hivi venye unaniona akanyambia bugeuka akiona mikono yangu aliona bruises akaona nimechomwa nimeumizwa kurudi ndo sasa akaambia mamangu so amerudi yuko kwangu my mom was shocked cuz hiyo time yote sikuwa yongea na yeye so akaanza kumwambia mimi ni rebellious I'm rebellious sikutaka kuongea na yeye sijui mtumia pesa unaona so sisi tanga kumwambia mama usiseme hivyo na sasa ujui hali ya mtoto wa tushukuru amerudi akiwa mzima for me my family walijua i came back mm-hmm. but they knew i came back not knowing the whole story uh-huh. kenye mamango aliwaambia is so amerudi but alikuwa hanitumii pe anitumii pesa sasa me trying to tell my own part of the story how i believe sasa si unaona mamangu ni sister yao and she has brothers uh-huh. na mamake pia still yuko alive sasa familia mzima inamwamini instead they believe me uh-huh. naona kwa kwa my sister akapata pesa nikaenda home one month nikakaa na watoto wangu nikarudi Nairobi i continue staying with my sister tukauza mchele kuuza mchele the last mchele yenye tuliuza niletea my grandma it was 5 kg na nilikuwa na yuza 1500 kumletea nyenyangu nyenyangu aliniuliza nani alikwambia unilete mimi sitaki mchele sasa she's telling me kikuyu me i understand but i cannot speak kikuyu sasa anaambia nani alikwambia unilete mchele mimi sitaki mchele nani amekutuma nikamwambia shosho mimi nimepigia nkoli yangu there's one uncle of mine in mandera nikamwambia nimepigia nkoli yangu kumwambia na uza mche akanyambia nikulete hiyo ni kuni promote as my uncle unaona akaambia mimi sitaki rudi nayo sasa yeye anachukua akaniambia niache that same day i went back home to my sister's place kufika tulikuwa na tulikuwa tujalipa nyumba sister yangu alikuwa na deni kubwa before i came unaona sasa hiyo siku mwenye nyumba amekuja nimefika hivi amekuja amesema atutaki kwa nyumba asiwataki tokeni so me went in a polite way juice stango ameongea na yeye hey, believe nikatoka nikamwambia aki please tupatie two time tujipange tukutafutie pesa tukupatie she refused all she said is tokeni muende i had money ile nilikuwa nimeuza mchele tulikuwa tunafaa tutafute stock ingine tu uuze nikampatia sistangu pesa nikamwambia wewe enda nyumba you just go home sistangu akaniuliza na wewe nikamwambia wewe enda while you are there unaweza ni connect kwele kazi yenu ulikuwa unafanya ya hoteli so akani connect nikaenda kwenda it's in Nairobi hapa karibu na ambassador nikaenda kufika pale akaniuliza wewe ni sister yake mtu fulani na i told her yes akaniambia okay unaanza kazi leo akamwambia fine nikaanza kazi kwanza kazi nikamuuliza unaweza nitafutia mahali pa kulala akaniuliza why nikamwambia ai mimi nimetoka Mombasa na nimeconnect wake kazi na sister yangu na sister yangu huko Mombasa huko Mombasa akaniambia sawa akanitafutia mahali nikakaa kukaa that's where sasa nikakutana na with my third baby daddy sasa kwa hiyo harakati ya me staying kwa hiyo nyumba yenye umo na mke amenisaidia nayo nilikuwa nafanya kazi ya kuserve chakula kuserve chakula sasa mwanamume alikuwa anakuja na nisalimie hivyo so as time went by me nika akuja kaniuliza eh na kuonanga hapa but when kapole una maneno mengi you see hiyo mwanamume kuvutia msichana nikamwambia mimi niko na watoto wawili kijana kwa 11 years msichana kwa 8 years akanyambia si mbaya hivyo takusaidia sijui you see all those fake promises as time went by mamangu akaongea na 
uwe kijana mm. akaanza kuongea kuongea each time i ask them they don't tell me anything each time i ask awaniambi wananyamaza nikiuliza mwanamme mwanamme ananyamaza nikiuliza mamangu mamangu ananyamaza so mimi niko hapo katikati of which i don't know what's happening mm-hmm. sasa ikafika hiyo point ya i found out niko na mimba the first person to tell was my mom hiyo time nikimpigia akanyambia niko kwa shosho lakini usikuje naona akanyambia to meet ronga of where my aunt anaishi nikaenda nikaingia clean shelf nikafanya shopping nikawapelekea kuwapelekea that day didn't talk to them it was just kujuliana hali hivyo nika nikawajulia hali nikaingia jikoni i made tea i cooked for them nikawa serve hivyo some cleaning the next day sasa ndo nikafalisha mamango chini with my aunt nikamwambia mom kuna kitu nataka kukuambia and i don't know how you'll react to it akanyambia nini nikamwambia mom mimi niko na mimi niko na mimba akaniuliza uko naje mimba na ulikuwa na family plan nikamwambia mom family planning yes nilikuwa nayo but how sure hata wewe mwenyewe ukienda hosi ukiweka hizo family planning unaambiwa wangu it's 50 50 unaweza pata mema na unaweza kukosa kupata. Kurudi kwangu mwanamme aka kakuwa mzuri akaniuliza if my mom has gone nikamwambia yes. Tukakaa nikaanza sasa kumitisha pesa ya clinic. Kumitisha pesa ya clinic tukaenda first scan. First scan sasa tulienda on mwezi wa 5. Kwenda mwezi wa 5 mimba nime, mimba nimeipata from tumejuana na ye from March this year mpaka last month 27th ndo tumekosana na ye in between hapo hizo wakati wote in between nikimwambia nyumba ya clinic akikataa tukaenda scan mimba ikaonekana iko na 8 weeks 6 days akapigia mamangu akamtumia picha ya scan akamwambia mimba si yake si yake akaambia alitumia mamako yes. kumwambia mimba si yake yes alimpigia akamwambia mimba si yangu mwambie mtoto wako atafutie baby da baby daddy sayo mimi i'm in the bathroom taking a shower nasikia mimba si yangu so mimi kutoka nikamuliza acha umesema akanyambia umenisikia vizuri mimba si yangu nikamwambia tumejuana na kutoka lini march mpaka wa leo how can you refuse your own child akaambia mimba si yangu si yangu si yangu si yangu hapo ndo sasa akaanza violent kwanza violent each time nampigia mamangu na muelezea kumuelezea mamangu mamangu ananiambia be patient vumilia sasa mimi nikiambiwa be patient vumilia mimi na vumilia ikafika time ya imefika to a point sasa naona there is no hope for me nikachukua laptop yake nikaona namba ya mamake kuona namba ya mamake i wrote it down na namba ya sister yake nikaandika nilivanza kupigwa akianza kuninyima food akifunga mlango akinikataza hata nitoke nje niote jua nikaanza kumwambia my mom kumwambia mamangu naambia mom please ongea na mamake wewe ni mama mamake pia ni mama if you explain the situation to her, his mom anaweza kukuelewa na you can come up with a solution nyinyi wazazi wawili wawili ya venye mnaweza nisaidia ama mwenye venye mnaweza tusaidia naona sasa mamangu alikataa akakataa 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 kabisa all she told me ni to seem involved mamake why mamake yuko uk nikamwambia mam mimi pia nilikuwa saudi kwa hivyo it means mtoto wangu angekuwa kwa hii situation msichana ukose kuniambia ingesaidia ama sahi mtoto wake angekuwa kwa hii situation yangu akose kuambia mamake mamake aje ajue baadaye kwamba mtoto amekufa na mimi ndo nimemuua hangenichukulia hatua 
akaniambia angekuchukulia tu. Nikamwambia then why? Why are you being hesitant? Kwa nini unakataa? Ananipiga. Mwanamume mpaka akitoka anafunga nyumba, I mean inside. Ukimwambia we go with him anakataa. Ukijaribu kutoka nje ukifua you wash his clothes and yours. Ujaribu kutoka uanike, anachukua anatoka anaanika. Hataki kutoka nje. Yes. Mm. Chakula ilikuwa mpaka ile siku anajisikia kunipatia. That's when I eat. And you're pregnant. And that time I was pregnant. So, mimi nikanyamaza. Kunyamaza mwanamume akaamka one day akatoka kaenda. Sasa hiyo siku nikafuata kiateka nikamuliza kiateka mambo kwa eh umenionea huyu mwanamume mwenye nakaa naye akanyambia ai amepita hapa lakini alipita asubuhi akiwa na bag uhuru bag amebeba na mimi sijui ilikuwa na nini nda na nini nda nikamwambia ajabeba nguo i think ni laptop yake akanyambia oh ni saa maybe ataru atarudi okay mimi kumpeleka polisi it's cause ilianza tena kuni affect kuni affect sasa mentally niliona I'm almost running mad naona na ile kunipiga alinipiga nikaanza kusikia some pains kwa tumbo ju mostly alikuwa na m tumbo so each time akinipiga tumbo i hide na ficha hivi nikikosa kuficha hivi nachukua nguo ama blanket na ficha but anapiga he kicks na mkono na he kicks na mguu naona sasa hii mimba ambayo umebeba yes mm. sasa mimi nikaanza yes nikaanza ku feel pain nikaanza kuona blood inatoka i became scared nikakimbia police station kukimbia police station polisi wakanipatia ubinamba wakanyambia nikimbe kwa hosia serikali mm. i went to saitoti nikaenda nikafanywa alikufika tu hivi nikamwambia aki please it's emergency wakanyamba ni sawa nikaonyesha ubi they took me to scan it was free mm. mimi nilifanywa free so mimi kufanywa scan huyo nas mwenye alinifanyia scan alinyambia mtoto amekaa ina bad position of which ina cause bleeding na chances zangu za kuzaa da 50-50 na za za before ama after nikamuuliza will my child survive akanyambia yes akaniuliza ni nini ime happen so me explaining hiyo situation nikaanza kulia nika i was then i broke down in tears akanyambia usilie just express nikamuelezea uh-huh. akanyambia wewe rudi police station na hii picha ya ska uwapatie mimi nikarudi kurudi the OCS wakitengela police station na assistant wake wakaingia kwa gari wakanyambia we go naona juu venye nilitoka hosi nikawaelezea nikapewa form ya details zote zenye daktari alikuwa ameandika how bad was my pregnancy at that time mm-hmm. so kuwapelekea we just got in the car we drove kwenda kumtafuta kufika kwa hiyo building nani eh kiateka kuulizwa kiateka anakataa but in the reality of kiateka is hiding baby daddy from the police wanaongea na yeye mpaka nikaambia OCS chukua simu uconfirm akichukua simu akiconfirm imepigwa tu minutes ago kujua kama i'm still in the building i mean ama i've left kiateka akaambiwa pigia mwanamme mwanamme kupigiwa ashiki ju tayari ashakuwa informed na mabishti zake ya kwamba i went to get the police sasa wana mtafuta mwanamme akazima simu akipigiwa ashiki unampigia saa hii inaingia two minutes later akomteja hiyo ndo game alikuwa anatuchezea polisi wakapiga simu Atriva. Atriva it's where mama yake alikuwa amenunua nyumba. Mbona familia yako hawajaingilia hii mambo yote waja kusupport hadi sasa hii? 
family kukata it's cause i refused the first proposal which one was that getting married to an old man really yes uh -huh. nilikata kuolewa na mwanamme uh -huh. who was 70 something years when was that after nilirudi kutoka saudi uh -huh. So me kukata the first person mwenye alisema hani support was my mom. So but what is your situation how was it ndipo paka wakakwambia uolewe na yeye? Okay. Mimi kutoka Saudi venye nilikuwa niko traumatized. Walikuwa wanataka kuficha aibu. Uh -huh. Of which nisijulikane nilienda nchi ya Waarabu nikarudi kitupu. Uh -huh. Naona Uh -huh. Sasa hiyo kuficha aibu wakantafutia an older person who is old enough mimi kumuita my grandpa my grandfather. Uh -huh. Yes. Ulimuona? Yes. Ni mzee. Uh -huh. kuuliza miaka yake all I was told ni mtu wa kuanzia 70 and above. Alikuwa na pesa, mali ama namna gani? He is rich. Uh -huh. Sikatai akona pesa akona everything sasa he wanted me to be his second wife naona mm -hmm. na for me mimi nilikata ndipo sasa my mom akosha mkono akasema she wants nothing to do with me hata nikapata shida aje it's better for me to go to the street to the streets so hizi mimba iko na miezi mingapi sasa hii mimba yangu iko na 7 months 3 mm -hmm. weeks mm -hmm. Kuishi na ishi wapi? Kuishi I was living kwa streets. Venye nilifukuzwa na my grandma, nilikuwa sina mahali pa kwenda. Uh -huh. Kukosa mahali, nikarudi kwa barabara. Just roaming around asking for help. Kila mmoja ukizunguka ukitisha msaada wanaogopa. You see, they fear ya kwamba anaweza <laughs> zaa any moment from now. Uh -huh. Naona. Uh -huh. But the truth is nabaksha one month to go na za January tare nane. So kwa hiyo harakati that's why I met a good Samaritan mwenye to me na muita auntie. Mhm. Mm Nikamwelezea, kumwelezea my story I came up with the idea of me trying sharing my story na tuko. They gave me accommodation. Mhm. Mm Uko na message gani kwa familia yako na kwa mama yako? Okay the message to my family is first ningependa kuomba msama for anything i might have done to them ningependa kuambia pole sana i'm not perfect i'm not an angel na to my mom if she's watching ama mtu yote mwenye anaocha anamjua i would like to tell her i appreciate her ningependa sana kumwambia she's god sent na nimemkosea yes and i'm grateful for her taking care of my two kids mpaka saa hii pole sana kwake i'm not perfect but i would like to fix my mistakes and start my life afresh saa hii i'm going through therapy ni forget all this june liambiwa it's affecting my unborn child of which ni kambiwa I forgive myself na nijipende. Yes. No, no. So for now I would like to focus on that. Na if given a chance na if the other people out there ningependa kuambia anyone mwenye anaweza kuni support, they support me. Ningependa kurudi kujua kusonga, I go back to shule ya kushuka na nianze upya na ni acting uh -huh. yes kama kuna ma producer anyone uh -huh. anipati your chance uh -huh. mtu akitaka kuwasiliana na wewe atawasiliana na wewe kwa njia gani na hauna simu okay there's uh, as a good samaritan kama uh -huh. vile nimesema uh -huh. anaitwa neema uh -huh. But unfortunately sijui namba yake if you can kindly share with the viewers. Ni yenye alitupigia nayo. Yes. You can only get to her through Neema Juma and Neema's number is 0746288641. That is 0746288641.
0242-641-641. Nema Juma, you'll be able to get in touch with Susan Njoki because as of now, she doesn't have a phone. But maybe in the near future, when she gets a phone, we'll share the number on the pinned uh, section on or on the pinned comment. Uh, the first time nilijua kuhusu Susan ni time alikuwa anauza mchele. Mhm. Ah vile alikuwa anauza mchele because niliona ni mchele ya kishori. Akanuzia alikuwa akinileta aliniuzia almost twice lakini ndio naishi karibu na na their family members so nilikuwa na mtuku kwa ti very close na yeye lakini tulikuwa na mjua tu on a personal level no mm-hmm. lakini tulikuwa hii tumecommunicate at story yake dipani ya bari mzuri na uza mchele hivyo sana no. lakini i know their family members mm-hmm. they are my neighbors so mm, matatizo yake uliyafahamu namna gani so Susan vile alikunia kwa niambia ati akona mimi sijai muona since alileta mchele alileta mchele it was i think february siku yenye alikuwa anauza mchele tangu there sijai muona tena siku isikia kuhusu yeye the moment nilimuona nilimuona anakuja hiyo side ya Kongo na ananiambia amefukuzwa na shusho yake sasa mimi kukaa chini nikamuuliza kwa nini kwa nini umefanya umetoka wapi kwanza kwa nini uko na mimba ndio sasa akaanza kuniambia story yake vile tu amewaambia vile kwanza aliniambia nikamuuliza kitu ya kwanza nikamuuliza because I'm a woman na job tu ana uko na mimba lazima aende clinic nilimuuliza umeenda clinic kaniambia sijaanza clinic lakini nilifanywa scan vile niliambiwa nimepigwa na hiyo maneno nikamwambia ulienda hospitali gani jua tizo makaratasi ilikuwa miacha hiyo police station alikuwa nikamwambia twende hospitali kesho yake morning twende hospitali na hapa tumempata eh, alifikaje hapa hii nyumba haina chochote unaona sasa hapa vile amekuja unajua amekaa kwangu na unaona said kwangu hakuna enough space No, no. Mm-hmm. So sasa tukasema ni better no no sana mama pray food we can eat what we have una no, no, tunaweza kula food what we have but that house kwanza rumenya na alikuwa nimempea it's my daughter's room so my my daughter will have ku share na brother ke room which is very un- we are easy kalala na anybody kwa bed kulingana na situation yake so from e we can kasema tutafute kanyumba hata kama ni ya 1000 hata kama ni nini yakuwe na space yake we can provide food kama bado hata kama ana kitu ya kupika we can cook tukienda kumuona akiwa in case atakuwa na, anataka ku deliver mimi akinipigia nitampeleka uh-huh. jo ready tumefanya hizo linda mama na hizo vitu zote kiamu si mbali nitampeleka uh-huh. in case aki deliver lakini at least i start sa, somewhere because hata hata kaka kwangu sina enough space sina sina hiyo ability ya food tunaweza kula but unaona mama akiwa pregnant na place sasa vitu ka hiyo kwa hivyo anahitaji msaada sasa anahitaji msaada unaona hata sasa hii inyumba mkitupigia tulikuwa tumekuja kutafuta inyumba from Sunday na huku hakuna tulikuwa tafuta single room in fact huku ni kiambo hapa hivi around hakuna nyumba ya mawe ya, ya 2000 nyumba ni, ni 45 35 una ana 3500 4500 na unajua we cannot afford that tukikuja hapa huko kuna mtu alikuwa anaishi hapa but alishindwa kulipa kacha matresi yake unaona ndio hiyo hata iko hapo yeye ndio analalia Eh, sasa hiyo mattress na bedding sasa huyo mama vile alisema vitu nimemwambia shida ya nye huyo ako nayo na akamwambia anaweza lalia huyo mtu akikuja ampe mattress nikamwambia juu tujaosha hizo ma beddings zingine tujaosha juu tulikuja ikiwa na vumbi nikakuja nikasaidia kuosha keka hiyo mattress hapo chini ndio aweza at least kulala asante wendelee na huo moyo na tuna hope kwamba tuko family itaweza kusimama na na Susan liaweze kuendelea na maisha yake vizuri. Thank you very much. Thank you. Santi sana Susan kushia story yako na sisi. Pole kwa yale yote umepitia and we pray that your therapy una, una, unaenda itakusaidia ku overcome those challenges as you focus on raising your children. Ndio. Thank you. Santi kushia story yako na sisi. Uh, may God bless you. May he now open a new page. And I'm sure after sharing your story with Tuko family we shall open a different page in your life. Sindio. Yes. Thank you. We love you as a family 
and welcome on board. Tuko family, that is a long, windy and painful story of the life of one Susan Njoki. It has not been rosy, but she says her focus now is to restart, you know, to kick that reboot button, starting afresh. I'm sure we can do that with her. We can stand with her and show her that there is another life of love, of abundance, and of support. Let's get to do this with Susan Jockey.